Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our live stream Mass for the fourth Sunday of Lent, live right here from Sacred Heart Church in Rochelle Park, New Jersey. I want to take a minute to welcome anyone who may be joining us for the first time here at our online campus. No matter who you are, where you're from, where you've been or what you've done, you are welcomed and loved here at Sacred Heart. This week, we're in the fourth week of our message series that we've been calling Catholic Atheist. And we've been looking at how, as Catholics and Christians, we profess to believe in God, but then by our thoughts and actions show that we don't always trust God or act as if he exists. Leading our Mass today is our pastor, Father Rich Kelly, and our Gospel reading today is the story of the man born blind. Father Rich is going to be talking about how we're called to follow the example of the man born blind, who was able to recognize the Messiah, while the Pharisees and religious leaders totally missed it and never came to know the Lord. Our propensity for Catholic atheism tempts us to profess belief in God, but then fail to recognize him working in our lives and to not actually know the Lord on a personal, intimate level. Father Rich is going to talk about what we can do to change that. And his message will begin about 15 minutes into today's Mass. So stick around, sing, and pray along with us in your home or wherever you may be watching. Before we begin, take a second to hit the share button. That's going to be in the bottom left corner of your screen. You can share it on your wall by clicking share and then write post or by starting a watch party or sharing it in groups that you're a part of. We want to reach as many people as possible and sharing this video is crucial to bringing church and God into a world in need right now. Our worship team is all ready to go. So as we begin today's mass, let's lift our voices together as one family of faith. Like a tree planted by the water, never will run dry. So living water flowing through, God we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire, Lord. Just to know you and to make you know we Like the sun, they die. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord be with you. Welcome to Sacred Heart. We're so glad that you joined us for worship and praise. And to break open the word of God today. As we gather together on this fourth Sunday in Lent. Our world and our country face incredible challenges right now. And there's only one thing that can help us. It's our faith and our hope and our trust. Today we're going to hear about the man born blind who trusted. For the times that we haven't trusted in God, let us call upon God in God's compassion, love, and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life and to spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature because I have rejected him. Not as man does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on us, for we have sinned. We come before you, cleanse us from within. Have mercy on us, Lord. Be merciful, Lord. Have mercy on us, for we have sinned. We come before you, cleanse us from within. In your 
great compassion wipe out my offense Wash me from guilt, Lord, cleanse me from my sin Have mercy on me, Lord Be merciful Spirit from me, be merciful, Lord, Lord, have mercy on us, for we have sinned, become before you, cleanse us from within, have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy on us, Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, <clears throat> Awake, o <clears throat> Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a blind man from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam which means scent. So he went and washed and came back to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, it is. But others said, no, he just looks like him. 
He said, I am. They brought the one who was blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you are born totally in sin and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus had heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our live stream mass for the fourth Sunday in Lent. Before I begin our message today, I take the opportunity to say that if you're normally with us here in person each week in Rochelle Park, New Jersey, I want you to know how much I truly miss you and how grateful I am for our incredible music ministry and our media ministry that allows us to be together each week. I've been keeping all of you in my personal prayers and I can't wait until we can be together again sharing the Eucharist and fellowship together as a family. So we're in the fourth week of Lent and therefore week four of our message series that we've been calling the Catholic Atheist. We've been talking about how we profess to believe in God, but then by our thoughts and our actions, we show that we don't really trust God or act as if God exists. In case you're joining us for the very first time today, in week one, we spoke about how we profess to believe in God, but sometimes doubt his love for us. We sometimes say things like, God could never love someone as flawed as I am, or God could never love someone who has run so far away from him. But the reality is that nothing could be further from the truth. In week two, we said that we believe in God, but oftentimes we don't trust in the power of prayer. Last week, very fittingly, we talked all about worry. We said that if you remember nothing else, remember this. Worry ends when faith in God begins. Today we're going to look at a widespread form of Catholic atheism, and it has to do with our personal relationship with God. Today it's all about how we profess belief in God, but don't know him 
on a personal, intimate level. The fact of the matter is that relationships take time, effort, and energy. In our relationships with each other, we see just how easy it can be to drift apart. We have so many friends, but we may still feel like we don't really know anyone on a deep personal level. The same thing can happen between us and our God. We can easily drift away and get caught up in the absolute craziness of the world and the struggles of day-to-day -day life. Or perhaps you never really knew God to begin with. Some Catholics and Christians don't know God in a personal way because religion was a subject simply to be memorized and they had to know all the history and theological facts. Now, not that this is a bad thing, but it doesn't help us establish an intimate relationship with God. I went to 12 years of Catholic school and in elementary school, we had to do just that, memorize answers to questions about God, church, and faith. It wasn't until I went on my first retreat in high school called Search that I began to learn what it meant to have an intimate relationship with God. On Saturday, one of the seniors came out and gave a talk called Jesus Christ, my God and my friend. I never looked at Jesus the same way again because she gave me that base of what it meant to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. What a gift. You may have learned that God is love, but you weren't encouraged to seek a deep personal connection with that love. Maybe church was boring for you. Maybe faith was presented as rules and regulations to be followed out of fear or guilt. You know, there could be so many reasons why we don't know God personally. But folks, that is not what God wants. God wants to know you. God wants your heart. And God is constantly pursuing you each and every day. So we can either get to know God and deepen that intimate connection, or we could go on with our lives and potentially miss him entirely. Our gospel reading today illustrates that choice so clearly. In today's gospel, we hear the story of the man born blind. We hear how Jesus very intimately puts the clay on the man's eyes and cures him of his blindness. When questioned, the man says that Jesus cured him of his blindness and recognized him as the prophet, which the Pharisees did not like. Even though they had seen what had happened, they simply refused to believe who Jesus really was. Now we can be like that too. <clears throat> we can become so engrossed in our own agendas, our own plans, we leave no room to recognize God, much less get to know him intimately. The gospel story contrasts the total ignorance of the Pharisees against the man born blind who, um, who moves into the light of truth and recognizes Jesus as the Messiah. We are faced with the same choice every day. Like the Pharisees, we can refuse to recognize and make time for the God who intimately reveals himself to us, or we can follow the example of the man born blind, 
which is to recognize and get to know our God through daily prayer and worship. As Catholic Christians, we are called to follow the example of the man born blind. And here are a few things that we can do to make that happen. First, we need to admit our own blindness and ignorance. The man born blind admitted what he didn't know, and then he came to faith and worshiped Jesus. We need to get to know God better. Secondly, the man born blind came to know Jesus because he listened to him. We need to listen. Do as Jesus teaches, and you will experience healing. Do as Jesus teaches, and you will experience God's presence. Thirdly, leave space in your life for Jesus to come to you. Our God comes to us when we put aside the noise and the busyness of our world and leave room for his plans in our hearts. Now, many of us are at home. We're not going to work. We're not going to school. So this is the perfect opportunity for us to carve out some time to get to know God and to listen to his voice in the depths of our hearts. Put down the cell phone. Turn off the computer. Turn the TV off. Put on some quiet music and just be with God. Ask him to be with you, to strengthen you, to tell him that you want to know him and love him more deeply. I close with a little something I wrote. I want you to think about it and try to remember it. Jesus did not come to start a religion. He came to have a relationship with you and he has a purpose and a destiny for your life. Together we pray, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. As the Father has sent his Son, 
to heal and redeem us, we now ask him to hear and answer the prayers that we may be comforted in any affliction. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may God help us remain faithful to all of his commandments and grow in the fullness of the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may the Lord grant them the fortitude to remain true to his justice. We pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or in need, especially Ismelda Homilano and victims of the coronavirus, may the healing power of Jesus come upon them and bring them comfort and peace. We pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially John Ryman and victims of the coronavirus, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in the fullness of peace we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for the intentions expressed in our parish life book and for those personal needs we hold in the silence of our hearts and for the living intentions of the larose family ray murphy william giordano denise courtney nancy fatroso whom we remember in a special way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here and in their homes, may the Holy Spirit increase us in us a spirit of conversion and openness to his work in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we know that you are the giver of all good things. Hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
we place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both be faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of faith and has brought to those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim. From the beginning of the world are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy look we pray upon your people's offerings pour out upon them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and the blood of your beloved son Jesus is Christ in whom we too are your sons and daughters indeed once we were lost and we could not find our way to you. You loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was to reconcile all things in himself through the blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, once more giving thanks. He handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, Lord, and profess Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial 
of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into the one body of Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our I'm Father, sorry. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us, us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy that you should enter under my, my roof, but only, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Jesus did not come to start a religion. Jesus came to have a relationship with you and with me. And this same Jesus has a purpose and a destiny for our lives. Lord, these are troubling times. We need you more than ever. Help our faith. Help our trust. Help us to have the virtue of hope deep within our souls. Help us during these days and weeks and months ahead to remember that we are all your creation and that you love us unconditionally. Help us to remember how much you care and love for each of us. Help us to remember to take time each day to carve out that time for prayer. To put down those cell phones and turn those computers off and just be with you in your loving presence. Because there's nothing more important than our relationship with you and your relationship with us. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into the world, illuminate our hearts with the splendor of your grace, that we always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Before we conclude with our final song, I am deeply grateful to our media ministry, my music ministry, Dave for lecturing this evening, and I am completely indebted to each of you. I've received so many phone calls and texts and emails over the last two weeks of affirmation and love, and trust me, I love you back. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth. Our Mass is ended. Sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading.